We are a family who have quite a substantial library. As many of you know, I do am a collector of comic books, and I probably have somewhere in the range of 12,000 comic books. Not a small amount to read. We have many books sitting on our shelves and many still sitting in boxes because there's not enough shelves. In my office, I still have books to try to find places for as well. And Eric, though he turns six months old on Friday, already has several hundred books, 83 of which are the little golden books. 83 little, that's a whole lot of little golden books that he has. And, uh, and he doesn't even read yet. So for us, we can definitely understand how important it is to have books to read and stuff to learn. And when we look at this passage from 2 Timothy, it tells us the importance of the word, of the word, the primacy of the word. See, when we have this scripture for us, when we have this word of God, everything else that we read needs to go through that lens. It should be seen through the eyes of scripture. Paul says it this way. But as for you, continue what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. From infancy, just like Eric. As a baby boy, he has been learning the Scriptures from before he was born. From before he was born, we were teaching our baby boy. From before he was born, we were proclaiming Scripture into his life. From before he was born. For the... For the Jews in those days, what they said was that a child would learn scripture at his mother's breast. It's a very true thing. While, while, while the mother, while Jessica has Eric, while any mother has their baby nursing them, what better time is there than to speak scripture into the life of your baby? To be able to read the word of God to them, to quote the word of God to them, and give them assurances that daddy loves you, that mommy loves you, and that God loves you more than mommy and daddy ever could. So we have this. And Timothy's being reassured of this. Because when you look back just to verse, it, it talks about how, how challenging things are. In verse 12 it says, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. That doesn't look very fun. But that's what we have. We have people who want to deny what Scripture has to say and to turn to their own way. So, so Timothy's being reassured, you have had this from birth. You, from birth and before birth, have heard the word of God. You have heard the scriptures. You have heard, and for Timothy, it was most definitely, it was Torah, the law that he was learning. The law, the prophets, the psalms being sung to him in the womb, being told to him as a baby, being taught to him more and more and more as he grew up. really important. Because, you look at verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This Bible is not just another book, this says. This Bible is not just something, some other book. It, you can't just lay this down right next to Hop on Pop and say that Hop on Pop is what we need to live by. We can learn from Hop on Pop, again, through the lens of Scripture. The ultimate truth that we're to learn comes from Scriptures and is often revealed in books, books that we, that we have 
and we enjoy, and that we read to Eric as well. Words about his hands and feet and nose and hips and eyes, that they're there to glorify God. All Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture, as we read this morning, is inspired by God. All Scripture, in another translation, another way to look at it, all Scripture that is inspired by God, all of this, more important than those other, other words that are out there. And in Timothy's time, other things that people claimed to be Scripture aren't up to the level of this Bible that we have. This Bible is that canon, as we call it, the authoritativeness that we have to live by. It is useful for teaching. That one's very obvious, that we're supposed to teach, we're supposed to let people know from it, for rebuking. And that's not just in us rebuking people, but it's for as people read the scriptures, they should look at it and see that as they examine it and as they compare it to their life, that something's not quite right. There's a couple stories. There's one story of a man, Signor Antonio from Sicily, who went... He, took a, he bought a Bible for the very purpose of taking it at home and burning it in his fire. He went, he set his Bible in the fireplace, start to set it on fire. Matthew chapter 5 was opened up. And he started to read it and pulled it out of the flames. And over the course of the night, he read through the scriptures and read through the scriptures. And he said later, when morning came, I believed. That is scripture itself rebuking. Or there's another case, in, uh, another case where a robber came to a Bible seller, went up to him and said, burn these books, every last one of them. And the seller said, well, why don't, why don't you let me read you a portion of each one before you burn it. So he opens up one and reads the story of the Good Samaritan and the robber says, let me take that one. That sounds like a good story. He turns it again to another story and he says, oh, that's a good one. Give it to me. Let's not burn that one. And he did that over and over again until he got every single last Bible into the hands of the robber and not one of them were destroyed. Scripture rebuking. But that's not the end of the story. Many years later, the same robber came back to the area, not as a robber, but as someone proclaiming the word of God to the people of his town. 